so today I'm going to try to talk to you about um, Murray Rothbard on agency problem. Uh, it's a very technical topic. Um, the point of my presentation is more or less the following. I'm trying to explain to what extent Rothbard is a precursor of modern agency theory, particularly what we call the market mechanism, which are these ones. And with regard to the role of the state as a cause of aggravating agency theory or creating new economic problems. So let me make a, like, a quick footnote. To some extent, one could argue that Murray Rothbard contribution is not very original or only very marginal since another great Austrian economics also largely anticipated many of agency theories development this great economist is Ludwig von Mises uh, one of my chap dissertation chapter is on these topics but I will argue therefore that the main contribution of Rothbard is on the role of government the influences of government on agency problems and the role of the entrepreneur that. In the standard agency theory, there is no entrepreneur. On the other end, in Rothbard theory, you can see the entrepreneur all over the place. So since it's a very technical subject, I'm going to, first of all to explain you quickly what is agency theory and what is the problems with which agency theory is dealing with. We call an agency relationship a relationship between two individuals. Typical relationship is employer-employee. And the employee can take an action when the employee is going to perform an action on the uh, for the employer. Yeah is going to affect the welfare of the employer in order to satisfy his own interest. Okay? Traditionally, we argue that the employer, what we call the principal, is a, what we call an, un, an informed party. On the other end, the employee, what we call the agent, is the informed party. Let me take an example. <clears throat> I am working for a corporation. My employers are the shareholders. And they are asking me to maximize the profit of the company maximize the sales, to make profit for the company. Well, instead of doing my job as well as I can, as a, the best as I can, I will spend my whole day on the internet watching some websites, uh, not very appropriate in general, <laughs> stuff like that. Some people know what I'm talking about, that's okay. <laughs> So, okay, this employee, the manager, uh, what we say, shirking, shirking. Okay. They are not doing what they should do. So, the problem that the agency theory is asking is what will be the, how to induce the employee to perform the action in the best interest of the employers, whether they are shoulders, whether they are simple employer, when you are a patient, how you will induce the doctor to find a cure for your disease or for your illness. That's the purpose of agency theory. There is two types of problems. The first one is what we call moral hazard. It means that you cannot observe the action of your employee because while well, observing the action of your employee, monitoring your employee, it's costly, it takes time. You cannot be behind the back of each one of your employees. Okay? 
That's a moral hazard problem. The other problem is what we call an adverse selection problem, also called hidden knowledge. It means that even if you can monitor your employees, you might not have the required knowledge to know if they are, they are doing their job properly, appropriately. So the agency theory, which starts from the 70s, has analyzed different type of mechanism to resolve this type of problem, okay? to find solution to this type of problem. We talk about explicit incentive mechanism. Okay? The typical one is the contract, and we talk about implicit incentive mechanism. And these implicit incentive mechanism are property rights, reputation, competition, the institution, private institution, and of course, in some way, the entrepreneur. <coughs> so you can see that there is a broad, pretty famous people in the mainstream economies, like Armstrong, Milgram, Roberts, Alchon, Dempsey, Grossman, Hart, etc., etc. But on the other hand, you can see that Rosebard, in my economy state, in chapter 2, has, chapter 2, 9, 10, 12, mainly, has analyzed this different type of mechanism. I will focus more on implicit incentive mechanism. Because for the contract, the lit current literature is very technical and is based on particular assumptions like the form of your utility, preference curve, your uh, aversion to risk, and what is the probability distribution, what is the information available in the economy. On the other hand, when you look at property rights, in chapter 9, Rosebud largely anticipates Alchon, Dempsey, Grossman, and Alton Moore in the following way. He's talking about the relationship between shareholders and managers. And he's saying the following thing, is that while in the large corporation, managers on the day basis, on, on the everyday basis uh, jobs, they might have a great independence, but ultimately it is always the shareholders who make the most important decision. He talks about decision-making function. The role of property rights for the shareholders is a decision-making function. They are able to decide where and to whom property rights should be uh, means of production should be uh, allocated to, okay? Who will, who will be able to use the machine tools? Who will be able to use the money of the corporation? Okay? That's what we call in modern decision control residual rights. Okay? We all know, well, Economists know and they know that Alchon and Denset and Grossman and Hart focus on this idea of decision control, residual rights, also talk about residual claimant, which is as an owner you have the right to decide what should be done with the property you own when it's not included in the contract. You are also the residual claimant, which means you are the one who is going to receive the income stream, residual income stream that we call profit. Okay. The main idea for agency theory and Rosebud is that shareholders are the residual risk bearers. They are the one who are going to bear the consequences of inefficient actions taken by the or made by the managers. So therefore because they are the owners, they have the right to decide who is going to work for them and who is not going to work for them. That's an important right. Okay? And this is very 
in modern agency theory, we decide who is going to own these property rights regarding to their ability, okay, regarding to their ability to uh, manage this uh, property, okay? It's a problem of incentive. Another important mechanism is reputation. Reputation in mainstream economics has come with game theory, particularly Kreft and Fudenberg and Tyrol, which is very technical. We talk about folk theorem, which says individuals have long-term interest in performing the action as best as they can for their employers because if they break their contract, they are at risk not to find a job anymore. Right? It's a sanction, it's a punishment reward mechanism. Rosebud, on the other hand, acknowledged this kind of mechanism like uh, reputation and an incentive to do your job, because if you don't do your job, your reputation is going to be harmed. But on the other hand, his other contribution to the concept of reputation is the concept of blacklist and boycott. Since you are not the owner of your reputation, because reputation is not a physical good, first of all, and because reputation is what people think about you, if you, uh, you can exercise blacklisting and boycotting to sanction the people who are breaking the contract. Okay? If you don't do your job, you can tell to other people, you should not hire this person because he doesn't do his job very well. Blacklisting is the same thing. Other mechanism is why they call competition. So there is several competition. There is the labor market competition, the project market competition, and the capital market competition. Okay. Fama, Oliver Hart, Sharpton, Machloop, which is uh, between uh, mainstream and Austrian. We never know where is he is, actually. <laughs> but he's certainly more Austrian in the concept of uh, competition than most of the mainstream economy argue that competition in general is an implicit incentive mechanism that will induce the agents to perform their action as best as they can. Because there's competition in the labor market, and particularly when you are in a situation where uh, you have unemployment, well, there's always the ability to find somebody else who is able to do your job better than you. There's a competition between workers to, within the firm, to get access to higher position and between firms to get where you are going to be paid the most. Rosebud talks about that in chapter 10. Competition in the project market, well, if your corporation doesn't do any profit, well, you are at risk to have what we call liquidation. And if you are in liquidation, or if you are in bankruptcy, well, you lose your job. So, the product market competition gives you incentive to perform your job as best as you can. Because the ultimate criterion in any corporation, private corporation, is profit and loss. Okay? If you do good, if you do profits, you are going to keep your job, have a higher wage, usually, you have an over bonus. But if you don't do your job, your corporation is going to go in bankruptcy, liquidation and you're going to lose your job. So, <coughs> Rothbard talk about that. And probably the most important competition mechanism is the competition for corporate control. It's uh, on the capital market. Corporate control is a very important mechanism and Rothbard repeatedly as well does Mises, Mises in human action, in human action, in socialism, in bureaucracy, in all these books, repeats all the time that capital markets are the, one of the most important mechanisms to, pre, to resolve agency problems. Okay, the takeover mechanism is when if your corporation is inefficient, the share price is going to go down, 
and therefore you will find what we call um, I forgot your name um, entrepreneurs, capitalist entrepreneurs we are going to take over the corporation okay? and change the management team to put a more performance management team private institution, well there is many mainstream economists who have come to analyze private institutions which are different from public institutions like government who are able to complement this other mechanism to resolve agency problems. More famous ones are Migram, Roberts, Avner Greif, Che, Douglas North, and Professor Botti because he wanted to be on the left. Uh, but in chapter 12, when Rosebud analyzed the impact of government intervention on the market, he also shows what are the other alternative private mechanisms to resolve this problem. When he's talking about problems like standard of quality and safety, or when he's talking about uh, um, mostly about standard of quality of safety, when he's talking about uh, problem of uh, contract violations, is explaining there's many private institutions, private enterprises who come to complement and try to resolve these problems. Uh, Professor uh, Daniel Klein wrote a couple of papers on that and he showed there's plenty mechanism, private institutions who are able to play the entrepreneur role in providing information to the consumers. Okay. Government, that is probably the most important Aspect in Go and Rosebud uh, theory is that in mainstream economics there is no real uh, theoretical analysis of the uh, impact of government on agency theory. Actually, like a couple of weeks ago, I was reading a paper by Bent Armstrong, who wrote a paper on dynamics of um, agency problems, and he argues and he said clearly there is no interest in analyzing the effects of government on agency programs. We should more analyze the inefficiency of the market system. Well, I would guess, I think it's Swedish, right? Professor Klein? Is he Swedish? Yeah? Well, so he's a socialist, that's why probably. <laughs> and he's, he's teaching at MIT too, so that's also why. We are all socialists at MIT. Um, so, but empirically, we have many studies like the, uh, Peltzman, keep discussing, we have repeatedly shown from an empirical point of view that government intervention to attempt to resolve agency problems like moral hazard and adverse collection are totally inefficient. Rosebud, on the other hand, doesn't do very much empirical analysis, while well, he does a little bit, but he does more theoretical analysis and shows that every government action which should be understood as a violent action, which is an invasion of your property, reduce the incentive of people to make the most efficient use of his property, and therefore create conflict of interest between individuals. Because interventionism or regulation is always giving privilege to somebody against somebody else. So it creates Conflict of interest okay. Conflict of interest between the individuals. What is important in Rosebud in this chapter is that he makes a dichotomy between violent action or violent appropriation okay, and voluntary appropriation or what we call contract. He shows that every time you have a violent action, whether it is the government or the mafia, it's like the same thing, you know, just one is legal, the other one is uh, not legal. But the most important thing is every time you have a violent uh, action, people are constrained to d make a use of their property that they would have not done on a free market system. How long does it have? Okay. 
<laughs> so therefore, violent action always aggravates agency problems. Or actually, create new agency problems. The typical example is what we call insurance deposit. I'm not going to talk too much about that because there is a professor, uh, Salerno, and he is a specialist in monetary theory, and not. So, we will tell to you about that. The insurance deposit creates an agency problem, a moral hazard problem, between the bank and the shareholders in general. Okay? And the customers too. I'm going to quickly finish on the role of entrepreneurship. Well, in uh, agency theory, there is no such thing as the role of entrepreneur. There is no entrepreneur. Even cause in the theory of when talks about the entrepreneur, but it's like assimilating the entrepreneur to a simple manager. Okay? Fama doesn't talk about entrepreneur. It's talk, oh, there's no entrepreneur, there's only managers. Okay? Rosebard play, uh, uh, emphasize the role of entrepreneur at many levels. Okay? On every type of market, you have an entrepreneur on the market for capital, corporate control. Okay, the raiders are entrepreneurs who are able to perceive an efficiency in the management of a firm, the take over of this firm, and change the management team and try to improve this firm. It is true that you might have some problems, okay? what we call in economics, free rider problems. Okay? Or it is true that some raiders or some management team who want to take over another company is for prestige or to uh, increase their wage. This is not a perfect mechanism. Uh, Rosebud talk about entrepreneurs in private institutions. Okay? All these consumer reports, all these corporations who try to provide information to the consumers about the, the safety or the quality of goods is largely emphasized in Rosebud. Um, sorry, I have one minute. Okay. 30 seconds, okay. <laughs> That's fine. I don't have much to say anyway. So. Okay. <laughs> so the important idea, the important thing we have to remind in Rosebud theory, I believe that this important idea is the difference between government and market mechanism. Okay? Government intervention is always a violent action on the property rights of individuals and it generates conflict of interest aggravate agency problems, and sometimes create new agency problems. On the other hand, market mechanism, while they are not perfect, Rosebard is not like a typical uh, mainstream economic saying, oh, we are in a perfect competition model, or the world should be perfect. No, Rosebard is a realistic person and knows that there is no perfect system, but the question Rosebard is always asking himself is which system is the least inefficient? or which system is the more efficient. Okay? And with all Manicomian says is to show that every time you have a government intervention in the market, and more intervention you have of the market, the more inefficient is the system. Or the more agency problems you will have on the, on the system. The less intervention you have from the government on the market, the more efficient is the system. This is why Rosebud was an anarchist. This is why Rothbard was an anarcho-capitalist, because he believed that while the anarcho-capitalist system was not the perfect system, it was not heaven, it was certainly more efficient than any interventionist system. Thank you very much. I welcome any question. No.